abundance everywhere God's rich supply beyond compare Tis ours to use and to enjoy His gift to us without alloy Prosperity, prosperity, I know my own shall come to me. God sends his children joy and peace, good health and wisdom and increase. And we are grateful, voices raise to thee, O God, in hymns of praise. that I may ever be in sweet communion, Lord, with thee, upheld, protected by thy hand, secure the dear care I stand. Prosperity, prosperity, I know my own shall come to me. God sends his children joy and peace, good health and wisdom and increase. And with our grateful voices raised to thee, O God, in hymns of praise. There is no lack, all bountiful. His love provides, how beautiful, to know God guides us on our way, sustains and blesses us each day. Prosperity, prosperity, I know my own shall come to me. God sends his children joy and peace, good health and wisdom and increase. And with our grateful voices raised to thee, O God, in hymns of praise. And we are grateful voices raised to thee, O God, in hymns of praise. Good morning, and welcome to the Midweek Experience. We are so glad that you're here. Now, you'll notice that today's Offering of Truth is a different format than the past. We call this the mid Midweek Experience, and we affirm that in this moment we share together that truth is revealing itself in creative and expressive ways, assisting us in growing a deeper awareness in Christ consciousness. Will you join me in prayer? We give thanks to you, Mother, Father, God, for this opportunity to explore truth. We know that you are here opening our hearts and our minds to experience your fullness in this lifetime. And we claim that fullness here and now. We claim that we are growing beings in you. And we claim your love in our lives. And we claim this in the name and in the nature of the living Christ. Amen. The unity hymn that Jody sang speaks to our topic today, prosperity. The spiritual laws of prosperity instruct us to have vision and faith and to take action towards manifesting prosperity in our lives. And the common myth about prosperity is it's all about stuff, meaning we have desire to manifest money and homes and realize dreams and opportunities, just to name a few. But prosperity is more about a divine relationship with our source, God. God has created for us an abundant universe. Everywhere we look, we see abundance if we choose to. John, Jesus told us in John 10.10, 10, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Our divine relationship with God, our source, invites us to walk in faith on this human journey towards an experience of abundant wholeness. This abundant wholeness is ours when we are willing to give with an open and joyful heart. So today we are exploring the ways that we give. We give to bring manifestations of prosperity into our lives. I'm going to be speaking briefly about releasing attachments to give up of the material things in our life that we no longer use, to release and let go of the chatter and the error thinking. Reverend Vi is going to talk about giving to God through tithing. 
Becky Rokel is going to speak about giving forgiveness, that stuff that blocks our access to peace of mind. Linda Burdett's going to be speaking about giving through service, seva. And Judy Gooday is going to be uh, speaking about releasing limitations, giving ourselves the love and the opportunity to experience God's good. So I'm going to share about giving up the things that we no longer need in our lives, the things that get in the way. My grandma was a collector of everything. She didn't collect fine or expensive things, and she didn't collect items to display them. She collected everything in case that she might need them in the future. And consequently, every drawer, closet, attic was stuffed to the gills with her collections. And I suppose her collection gave her a sense of of security because she grew up in the Great Depression and she learned to value things that others may consider to be junk or unnecessary. The challenge was she often didn't know where things were located when she needed them, so they really didn't serve her practical needs, just her emotional ones. As true students, we know that God is our source. We know that in order to prepare our consciousness and life for new manifestations of good, we have to make room to receive it. One of the practices that we can do is to clean out our closets and drawers and garages and attics and other spaces. And we take all those items that no longer serve our purpose and we give them away. Or we throw them away if they don't serve anybody. We release them. We do the same with the chatter and the air thinking that's in our minds as well. We let go of it. We give it to God. Our error thoughts keep us stuck in old patterns, and old patterns turn into ruts, and ruts turn into depression and disease. And when we let go of stuff and thoughts that no longer serve us, we create space for the new to come in. And as we discard these thoughts, we can allow new awareness in and and as it allows our consciousness to grow. Oh, I'm Reverend Vi Davis, and I get to talk about money. Oops, about tithing. Uh, One of the things that we don't think about or don't like to do in church is talk about money. But if you look at the Bible, you'll see that there are more uh, teachings about money than any other subject. Money is wonderful stuff. It uh, is really convenient if you're going to go buy a new car, because if we didn't have that money to pay for it, we'd have to haul along a whole bunch from our garden or maybe uh, help somebody build something so that we could get that. So money is uh, actu- can go anywhere that we cannot go, and it can do things that we cannot do. Really wonderful invention. And it is uh, uh, a symbol of God's substance that is everywhere present. Everything is created from God's substance. Money is a symbol of the abundance of God everywhere present. And so we have come to the point where we are so focused on outward uh, things and physical things that we forget about the invisible things that we call the kingdom of heaven. That's the basis of everything, and it's the basis of abundance. We separate money from spirituality because somehow or ever we have taken literally the idea that uh, dirty money, that phrase, dirty money. Money is not dirty. It gets dirty physically, but it's good stuff and we need to appreciate it. So I uh, began my tithing experience after I got over my aversion to talking about money in church because tithing is about money and about supporting the church. And that was my thing in the beginning, was that, oh, uh, tithing is only a gig to get you give more money to church. That was my thing. And I was in church, and I was teaching Sunday school in church. So it took me many, many years to get to the point to finally understand what tithing is about. And tithing is about connecting physically 
with the abundance of the universe. It is a way of uh, pushing through that uh, junk that we have in our mind and getting through to the spirit. We hold in mind many ideas about money. And uh, most of us have a wonderful consciousness about not enoughness. Not enoughness. And that's one of the things that gets in the way of our tithe. Because we figure we cannot tithe. If we tithe, we won't have enough money to pay the gas bill or for groceries or, or medic, uh, medical care. But that's not true. That's not true. Tithing is a spiritual commitment. Tithing is a spiritual practice. Uh, it is like prayer and meditation. It connects us with the abundance of the universe because we give a tithe to the source of our spiritual nourishment. That's what a tithe is. And when we give this money that we value uh, to our spiritual nourishment, something within us sits up and pays attention and says, oh, there's something more. There's something more. And so in this tithe, we keep giving, and this space keeps opening up within ourselves to receive more of God's goodness. For myself, uh, I began tithing um, when I finally went to seminary. Now, it's a long time. I'd been in unity a long time before I finally got it. Um, and what I discovered about tithing is that even though it looks like there's not enough, there's always enough if I tithe. And I can tell if I forget to tithe because everything starts going kind of kaflooey. But when I tithe, then everything straightens out again. Now, do I receive a pile of money in return? Well, sometimes, but not very often. But if I don't tithe, my, what I have doesn't go far enough. If I don't tithe, it affects how I feel inside of myself. If I don't tithe, it affects my relationship with God. If I don't tithe, I'm usually in a mess. So for me, it is an important part of my spiritual growth and understanding and my spiritual nourishment. The thing is, we need to release the old ideas of money not being spiritual when it is. Money is wonderful invention so that we can make life a lot easier and we always give it and spend it on what we value. So if we value our spiritual connection, are we going to maintain it? Are we going to nourish it? Are we going to tie to the place from which we receive our spiritual nourishment so that we can continue to live a fulfilled life? I'm not sure I have anything more to say about that. I'm not sure I made sense. But it made sense to me. I invite you, I invite you to give tithing a try. The, the way I began tithing was I could not give 10% of my income at one time. I could not do that. I wouldn't have this, you know, we have this thing in our head, I won't have enough money if I do that. So if we're really thinking about tithing and we want to get started, we can start out with a quarter tithe, one-fourth of a tithe. And then we can do that until we get comfortable with it, and then we can give a half of a tithe. And we can do that until we get comfortable with it, until we can give three-quarters of a tithe. And then finally we get to the full tenth. And when we really get to it, we give more than the 10% as a tithe. That was such a blessing to do that, to get to that point where I could give more than the 10% of a tithe. So I invite you to try it. I mean, you're going to have to try it for more than a week. You're going to have to try it for more than a month. You're going to have to try it for more than six months. 
because it takes time to get past the old programming about not enoughness. It takes that long to get our subconscious to sit up and say, oh, this is blessing us in some way. This is prospering us. So keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. And if you have to stay at that one quarter point for a while, stay as long as you have to, but don't let yourself get stuck there. Give yourself permission to move beyond. So I guess that's all I have to say about tithing. Um, I just do want to say that I got to talk about this subject because I'm the one that likes to talk about money. Money is wonderful stuff. So tithe and be blessed, and that's the truth. Hi, my name is Becky Rogel, and um, I really enjoyed the two speakers before me. I'm not really sure why I got picked for forgiveness, but and why I had to follow such wonderful speaking. I don't know if I can keep up here. But I did get chosen to talk about forgiveness and how this helps us create peace of mind and how it links to prosperity. Forgiveness is a tough one. Um, it's another subject that's hard for people to talk about. And I think a lot of it has to do with, it's not just to forgive somebody else, it's my biggest challenge was to forgive myself for so many things that I had put myself through and my family through. And there are many ways that we can forgive, right? We can write letters of forgiveness. I've done that in my, in my history. Things, people that I couldn't face uh, face to face and told them, you know, I forgive you for what you've done and please forgive me for my part in that. There are conversations you could have face to face and now digitally, of course, you know, back when I was a kid, we didn't have the digitally, but we do now. So there's a lot of ways um, that we can forgive, but it's important to remember what forgiveness does for us. Life is about this flow of energy. Prosperity is energy. Tithing is energy and forgiveness is energy. And when we hold on to this forgiveness inside us, it blocks the flow the flow of prosperity, the flow of peace of mind. And when we hold on to that fact that we won't forgive others or they haven't, you know, haven't stepped up and said, please forgive me. Or, you know, in my case, I had a couple of them that said, that never even happened. What are you talking about? And how do you forgive someone that hurts you so badly, but yet they won't even acknowledge that they hurt you? You know, that's a whole different have no forgiveness. That was a forgiveness between me and God because I could not get them to, to accept, you know, that what, ha what had happened. And so when I was able, in my, it's been my experience, and I'm able to take this forgiveness and let it flow, prosperity flows. My life flows. I sink up. I become back in balance. I find ways that, I mean, it's just the abundance and the prosperity, and it's not about the money. It's about the energy that moves through me. It's about how I feel in my day. Prosperity to me is about having a good day as well, being able to smile. It doesn't matter how much is in my bank account or, or that I'm you know, getting paid millions of dollars to, to speak, which someday I will. <laughs> it's about being able to say, I forgive. I have that peace of mind, and that peace of mind has brought me prosperity. And I've done this many times in my life, and I encourage you to find a way to forgive and to ask for forgiveness, even to forgive yourself, ourselves, for some of the things that have happened in our lives that we, be, we were a part of. Take this forgiveness, release this in your life, let yourself be a forgiver, and the weight alone that falls off is amazing. And the peace of mind that is found inside this is indescribable. And the prosperity that follows, well, give it a try, and you'll see. Thank you. My name is Linda, and they've asked me to talk about servants. How wonderful to be able to 
activate, follow the, the principles that have come before me. I tell a story, and you've probably heard it, about how the importance of service struck me. Um, in early recovery, I had a sponsor who, when I was doing my ninth step, you know, trying to make amends for the damage that I'd done, had me pick up trash for a year. <clears throat> I did some damage. And I did not appreciate that idea at all until I really started doing it. And one day, I was at a bus stop waiting for a bus, no car. It was, you know, that kind of a story. And the, the bus stop was just filthy, cigarette butts, trash, and all kinds of stuff. And so I start picking it all up, and I'm cleaning it up. And by the time the bus came, I turned around and I looked at that bus stop, and wow. I realized for maybe the first time in my life that something I had touched was better because I'd been there. And for me, that's the principle of service. It's not being of service to everyone or doing something so amazing that people fall down and say, wow, you're awesome. It's that feeling that I made a difference, that I matter, that I deserve this. And here's where it comes into prosperity. I tithe. I've, I've done my forgiveness. I've released the things that haven't served me. But I will not attract to me the prosperity that is my right, that should be mine, that can be mine, if I don't feel I'm worthy of that money. If I feel like, oh, other people should have it. I'm unworthy. Guess what? I get my wish. But if I'm doing service, if I'm doing things in the world, little, small, whatever, and I know that I'm making a difference, you know what? The world is better just because I'm here. I'm able to help, whether you know it or not, in so many different ways. I know I deserve my prosperity. I accept and allow my prosperity because I'm of service. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Judy, and I'm going to be sharing some thoughts that I have on releasing limitations. And in releasing them, the prosperity that we receive. So you're giving up something. As truth students, we come to know a different level of limitations. But prior to that, a lot of us probably don't even realize our limitations or that we're settling in life. We just take what life gives us. Or if a desire comes to us, we rationalize it away. And as an example, when I was in my younger years, much younger years, there was something inside of me that wanted to serve God. So being raised in the denomination that I was, I went away to a convent to see if that was the answer. That wasn't, so I did not become a nun. Another desire that came into my heart was go into the nursing field. I did a lot of volunteer work with little children in a hospital. But for some reason, I rationalized that away. And then there was another one that was join the Peace Corps, serve mankind, be an instrument of peace. Well, that's not on my resume either. So what happened all those years? 
I have a very eclectic resume, so I went from different jobs to different jobs. And yes, I could be very good in them, but I knew that I knew something was missing. I knew it. But I didn't understand the limitations I was putting on myself. And as I grew in my quest and my journey on my spiritual path, it really started hitting home. Something doesn't feel right. There's that intuitiveness that says, this isn't yours to do. This belongs to somebody else. You're keeping somebody else from fulfilling because you're holding on. You're afraid to take the risk, to move on. As I got deeper into my spiritual journey and got to know more and more of who this God is and that those little nudges that I have received all through my life was God saying, I have plans for you. I have plans that will manifest my glory, or I should say God's glory, through me. And what has happened just in the last few years is learning to trust that to trust that guidance. And you know those three things that were there for me when I was so young about serving God, nursing, and the Peace Corps? What I am doing today, while it may not look exactly as I thought it would look some odd years ago, I don't want to say how many, it may not look specifically like that. It has come true. I get to serve God every day of my life because when I awaken in the morning, I say, today is the allness of you. You come through me in any way you want to manifest your glory. And in that way, I am nursing my soul and whatever comes through me may nurse someone else. And I have learned how to listen, how to become that peacemaker. That it is through giving up control of my thinking that I'm going to do this job or I'm going to go through that job by doing that, there's no more restlessness. There's no more, what am I supposed to be doing? What is my goal in life? Learning to turn within each day and sometimes each hour has taught me how to release those limitations that have kept me a prisoner for so many years. The prosperity which equals freedom to live a life full of joy because of learning to surrender. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So what we've learned, what I've learned through this experience is that it is in giving that we receive. That's a line from the prayer of St. Francis. It is in giving up, of giving away of all the things that no longer serve us, um, that is an avenue to prosperity. It is in giving of our money and creating that relationship to receive with God. Um, through, we, that we do through tithing. It is giving forgiveness to others and receiving forgiveness for ourselves. So in a sense, we're giving ourselves forgiveness. It is giving in service because we are worthy. It is giving in service because 
We are a channel of God's love. And it's in giving of the limitations, moving through the limitations, getting permission to release those limitations that we come into full contact with our prosperity. I'd like to invite Reverend Vi to come forward and share in a meditation. In this time of meditation, let's uh, begin by perhaps closing our eyes. And we close our eyes so that we block out distractions. We want to stay focused on our meditation. And this time of connecting with the spirit of abundance. And as we breathe, we realize how freely the breath flows into us. The oxygen is right there. We have, don't have to do anything except breathe in. And when we breathe out, we release that air that is breathed in by all plant life. We are part of a wonderful circulation system of abundance. And we choose in this moment to recognize the abundance of every good thing in our lives in this moment. No matter how large or how small, we notice it and we give thanks for it. We look around us for the abundance that God has for us, the, the sun and the rain the joy of laughter, good friends, more than enough of every good thing. We look for God's abundance that is everywhere present. grateful for the abundance of love present in our life in this moment. We are grateful for the abundance of health that we do have. We are grateful for this place, for this time. We are grateful for joy, abundance of every good thing. In this moment, we choose to remember, to look for God's abundance. We choose to remember that every good thing is God's gift to us. We accept the abundance of every good thing that God has for us. this abundance is, is for our joy and our happiness and our love, for a rich, fulfilled life. And we choose to accept it. We choose to let it live in us. We choose to let it radiate through us. God's rich abundance 
everywhere present in you, in me, and everywhere. And as we bring our awareness back, we take a deep breath. The abundance of this wonderful air that we get to breathe, though freely given. We bring back with us into this moment, this time, this idea of abundance everywhere. We choose to accept it in our everyday living. We choose to be a blessing abundantly. And so we follow our breath outward, coming back into the space filled with abundance of God's good ideas, God's rich prosperity, God's perfect health alive in us right now. So we take that deep breath and let it out. <sighs> giving our blessing to the world and receiving a blessing from the world. So we bring our attention now. We're all the way back, all the way up. We open our eyes and stretch. And we say, thank you, God, for my abundant life. I choose it now. Amen.
We thank you for joining us for this midweek experience and we hope that it has touched you in a way that uh, inspires you to think more about prosperity and abundance in your life. I'd like to thank each of the participants who, who made this uh, midweek experience possible. I'd like to thank Reverend Vi for offering a wonderful talk on tithing and a meditation and to Becky Rokol for talking about forgiveness and Linda Burdett who talked about service and Judy Gaudet who spoke about breaking through our limitations. I'd also like to thank all the people behind the scene today. We have Patricia Santos, we have um, uh, Bob Burdett, we have Phil Rokol, and a special thank you to Jody Bagley for the beautiful music. We love the music, Jody. <laughs> we hope you have a wonderful week. If you feel so inclined, we'd enjoy for you to leave a comment or to let us know how you enjoyed this midweek experience. And coming forward for next mid midweek experience is something completely different. So we look forward to that as well. Have a wonderful week. We love you. We miss you. We appreciate you. We behold the Christ in you. Goodbye.